So welcome to episode 14 in this ongoing series where we're building a web application in Flutterflow. In this particular episode, we're gonna complete our sticky note component and give it the behavior that we need. Certainly when we create the sticky note in the first instance, we want to kind of enter edit mode, which is what we're gonna do in this episode. And we're also gonna do some further UI polishes while there's some areas which just require some tweaking just to make our application look a little bit nicer. So we're gonna do that in this particular episode. So without further ado, let's get into the video and let's get cracking. Okay, so we're now ready to make some additional enhancements to our Sticky Notes application. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to turn our Sticky Note into edit mode as soon as we actually add it to the UI. So I'll go up here, I'll hit the plus, create a brand new Sticky Note, and of course now I'm in a read-only mode. I want to start now typing on my keyboard. So let's now move over to Flutterflow and let's make those changes now. Okay, so here we are there with inside the note component and the changes we're gonna make is right at the top level here. Now, this is the, the top level that we've got set at the moment. We've got the local com uh, the component state variable. We know about this is edit mode uh, sort of indicator here. That's what we're gonna turn on to be true, but we need to do a little check. We need to check to see if the note that we're passing in, if it has the is new indicator to be set to true, then that's when we can go down a different path. Otherwise, we just need to carry on and just display the sticky note as it is. So within the top level here, move over to the actions, go to the action flow editor. And this is this component state update where we're really just applying the component state uh, parameter, which is the note that we're passing in and we're applying that to the actual note itself here. Once that's done, we can then move on to then this next conditional check, hit the little plus, say add conditional. And this is where we now need to apply a condition here. So choose the condition here, say single condition. And we choose the first value here. We just, here we can just choose the component state uh, parameter because we're just passing that in. Where it says no further change, we say data structure field. And on the select field, we need to choose the is new. This is what we're gonna be checking for. Just hit confirm. And we're gonna say, is it equal to, and then we can just say here, is, is it equal to true? Hit confirm. And then we're gonna move down in this this direction here. Otherwise, we're gonna head down in this direction. If it's if it's false, we can just display it in read only. But of course, if it's a new one, if we select a new on that left-hand side, we know it's gonna be is new equals true. So of course, we can now make this change here. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna introduce you to another action here, and that's gonna be a wait. When we create the actual sticky note on the screen, we need to wait for the kind of the UI to update. So we're gonna put a very, a very, very short delay in here. Just wait for things to play out. And then it allows our cursor to be positioned in the top left-hand corner with inside the actual sticky note itself. We don't want the kind of the, the draw to happen too quickly and then the focus to appear in, in the actual text box. We wanna give the time the UI to update. So just choose the wait delay here. And we're just gonna put a really, really short delay in of, of half a second. And then after that, we now then to do, to do a Another action which is going to be the actual component state update itself. So let's just type in here state, choose component state, choose the add field, and we're going to choose the is edit mode. So just select that. And of course, we're going to set this then to a true. So we can toggle this one or we can be very specific about sending it to true. Um, I'm just going to set it to the actual true itself here because I'm not going to know kind of what state the UI is in. So we just want to enforce this to be true. So just say true there. And that's all that we need to do. So once that is done, we can now quickly test this and we can then see if our edit mode is then activated as soon as we add the new sticky note. Let's go and check that now. All right, so in run mode then, hit the plus. Let's create a brand new sticky note. And there we go, we've got the cursor flashing, which is quite nicely set for us. And then we've got the little check here. And we can, of course, come along here. We can start typing some stuff in. So you can notice a bit of a weird behavior in a second. So I'm just going to hit the, uh, what I would think there is a save there. And I hit the plus again. Let's come along. Let's add a blue a sticky note. And, uh, oh, looks like something's gone a little bit wrong here. We seem to be kind of caught in this kind of strange state because we've got both of these marked as with, with checks on. And um, we can sort of start typing in. We've lost our detail. Oh, it's all gone horribly wrong. So the reason why this is happening is, is because we've created a brand new instance of our sticky note object. And we've got the is new parameter which is actually part of that um, actual sticky note itself but what we're not doing is we're not actually marking it as is new equals false once we've saved it for the first time it's always going to be set to true which is what we don't want so let's now go back to Flutterflow. let's correct that and then hopefully we can come back here and we can slightly see an improved uh, sort of a situation so let's do that now 
Okay, so we're going to have to modify this in a couple of different places, but let's do it on the actual update here. So move over to the action flow editor, open up the actions here, and it's the very first one that we need to do. This is the point where we update the fields of our note itself. And it's just over here. If you go to update note and we look here, you can see that all we're doing is, is we're just updating the actual description. But of course, every single time we do this, we can just ensure that we set the is new to false. So go to add field here, go to the is new, and then we can come down here, set the value, and of course, we're just going to then set this then specifically to false, hit the trash. And then, of course, we can now choose a false there for us. Hit done. Um, and so once we've done it there, we also need to then do the same thing with inside the actual uh, when we actually hit the enter key on the actual text field itself. So hit close there. Let's move to the text fields. So we can just kind of go to the conditional builder. Let me just find that here it is. So we can just choose to make sure that description field is then selected. Go over to the actions here, open up the action flow editor. And of course, it's just up here as well. Update the fields and then we can add the field here. Go to is new. Just move down here, set the value, just delete that out there. And we can set that to false like that. Hit the done and hit the close. And we can quickly give that another test. OK, so let's add our sticky note up to the plus. Let's have the red one in there again. And we are all good. We can start typing away some just some gobbledygook there. That's fine. Hit the little check, go to plus. Let's have, say, a blue one in there, and then we're all good. And you can see here we've got the right behavior that's happening now. We've got everything that's all saved over here. We're not losing anything. We've got our, our kind of buttons all looking correct. Hit the check there. That's really good. Let's add another one in here. Let's just do the kind of yellowy orangey one. Let's just type something in there. Hit that one. Of course, we can then delete the blue one out. Everything is all maintained for us. So that is all looking super, super good for us. We sort of corrected that problem. We're starting to making good progress now. Now, there is a couple of little challenges along the way. Here and I'm just going to point this one out because the application, we really wanted to take this application to the next level. There's one little bug that will cause us a little bit of a problem, or at least cause users a bit of a problem. Let me show you that. If I hit the plus here and let's say, let's do the orange one. And I was to start typing in some details here and you can see we're in edit mode. We've not saved anything. I've not hit enter or anything like that. But if we come along here and then delete, say this one out here, look what happens to the left hand side. We're still into that edit mode. But of course, we've lost the contents because what we've done is we've kind of made that callback back to the home page to kind of ref, uh, sort of refresh the state. So, of course, what we need to do is we ideally would like to put in our application is as soon as we put a sticky note into edit mode, what we could do is we could enhance the sticky note to actually when you when you press the X up the top right to delete it, what we could do then is we could then do a check to say, is any of our sticky notes in edit mode? If so, then don't do the delete or don't do the callback to refresh. So there's just some few enhancements, but they're the sort of things you would get used to uh, having to handle when you're building these kind of applications um, or certainly with inside your own projects as well. Those, those are all edge case scenarios that you need to kind of look out for that would cause users a particular problem. But for now, that's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. We've got our sticky note created and, um, and we can now move on to the next bit. So one of the next little enhancements I want to make to this application, this is really, really simple one here is the the actual delete icon that we got up here. Now, when we're actually into edit mode, we don't really want to see the delete icon actually appear. So instead of using the conditional builder, because we're not kind of displaying um, different sort of widgets um, based on different conditions, we can use the conditional visibility option within inside the properties for that particular container itself. So we've inside the note components. Now, if you look down here, we've got the note delete container. If you just select that, then what we can do is we can move up here to the conditional option here. So if just to select that to be on, we can now set a condition here to sort of display or hide this particular widget. So let's go to conditions here, go to single condition, and we're going to say the first value. If we just select that, we can go down to then the actual component state itself, click on component state. And we've got this is edit mode option as we've seen previously. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say, well, I want this uh, to actually be displayed if the following value is not equal to uh, true. So if I just if I just say here and I can say not equal to and I can just say this second value. And if I just select this to be true and hit confirm, we've now got this conditional uh, sort of check um, sort of now in place. So if I can now toggle this little option here, you can see I can play that condition out with inside uh, the UI there. So we can um, so be, be rest assured that what that will now do is that when we now enter edit mode, we'll now see that uh, that option now disappear. And of course, when we then return back, 
back into a non-edit mode, then um, of course it will then display. So um, we won't check that here, but um, rest assured, give that a go yourself and um, fire that up and you should see the result. If you've been watching my content on YouTube and you enjoy Flutterflow and surrounding technologies, then please do head over to the Digital Pros No Code Academy if you're looking to further your skills in this particular space. There is a fantastic collaborative community. All of my ad-free content is there as well. I'll be adding more in the not too distant future. I'll be putting on some live events from time to time there as well. There's written articles and there's some sample applications as well. So all of the Digital Pro detail is going to be all within inside the actual Academy itself. So a little more than a of a Starbucks, you gain access to the Academy per month. So it'd be fantastic to have you there as an Academy VIP member. The link is on the screen right now. I look forward to seeing you soon. So we're really making good headway now with putting some of the final pieces of polish on our application. There's a couple of little tweaks that we need to make. Now, if you look here, when I toggle between a light and dark mode, if you just keep an eye on this button here, have a look at the icon. It kind of goes like white and black. Well, there's a very, very simple correction that we're going to do very, very shortly. We're just going to set the color of that particular icon. So it, it, it respects then the, the light and dark mode theme. The other thing that we're going to do as well in this particular example is if you could just look down here to this area here we're just toggling between kind of the light and dark dark mode what i'd like to see in my application is i'd like to see kind of the the sun and the moon kind of fade in and out depending on whether you're in dark mode or light mode so there's a little bit of a ui tweak and we can do there as well so let's now head back over to flutterflow and let's make those two changes now Okay, so the way that we're going to make this work is that we, what we're going to do is we're going to set the opacity of these two icons based on whether we're in light mode or in dark mode. So with the light mode one selected, uh, we're going to just, if we just look up here, you can see in the widget tree here, we've got the light mode icon itself. So move up to here where it says opacity, just select the opacity option here. And we want to move down here to the conditional value, so the if then else, if you select that. And now we can now apply this kind of, if it's this, then set it as this value. If anything else said it's that value. So with the first condition, let's select that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to this area here called global properties. Okay, select global properties. And what we've got here is we've got these options that we can choose. Now, these are ones that's available right through our application. And then we've got this, this option here to say is dark mode. So we've kind of got this, this, this kind of this, this global kind of property that's available to us throughout the whole of our application that we can kind of sort of hook onto and we can check to see um, whether we're in, in this instance in dark mode or in light mode but you can see there is other ones available as well i mean it's quite interesting we can work out whether we're actually running on an ios device or an android device but here we're just going to use these particular ones here so just like the is dark mode so of course if we are in dark mode then what we need to do is we need to set the value of this here so we can set the is dark mode here to 0 0.4. So we're gonna kind of just tone down the sunshine icon if we're in dark mode. But anything else, of course, we're gonna set this as 1.0. So just uh, just confirm that there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here, just select this here. I'm gonna copy this particular variable because this is the great thing about Flutterflow is you can apply these variables, you can copy them, paste them anywhere else. So just hit the copy, copy value, uh, the variable. Move over to then the actual moon. Go back up to the opacity here and then paste it in here. And of course, we can now just come up here and we can kind of do the reverse. So just with that selected, let's edit that, move down to these global properties and let's choose the is light mode. So just say that, hit confirm. So we're just doing the reverse, is light mode, set it to 0 0.4. So we're, we're toning down that moon to 0 0.4, otherwise set it to one, hit the confirm. And then what we'll see, what we'll now see is when we run this up in run mode, we should then see that the, the icons fade in and out depending on what mode that we're actually in. Okay, so let's just correct then our color of our icons. So with inside the note component, with the, um, with the actual eye on the edit button there, just have that selected. Move down the right hand side, you can see this is kind of where we can set the properties of the icon. You can see here that we don't have any icon color selected. So with that, just select that and we're just gonna choose the informational one here, just select that. That's gonna make it nice and white. We also need to hit the little eye here and we need to apply exactly the same to our update button as well. So just with the icon color, let's just set that as well. So that's now just enforcing that white icon uh, color for those particular buttons. So right, let's now run this up in run mode and let's see how we get on. 
Okay, so just one point of note here. So for the eagle-eyed spotters, you might have noticed that in this particular episode, I've been firing everything up into run mode. And the only reason for that is because in test mode, for whatever reason, while I've been recording this episode, has been causing me lots of problems with the video. So hopefully normal services will resume pretty soon. So let's get back to then the changes that we've made. You can see here that the moon is nicely in view there. Of course, the sun is faded out. And if I just now toggle between the two here, go to the sun and you can see I'm seeing the reverse happening, which is great and you can also see now that um, we've got the kind of the white icon now that's being uh, respected as we sort of toggle between the two and if I just hit that then into that you can see that we're getting the right view that we need. OK, so that's pretty well much it for this particular episode. We've put a little bit of final polish onto our application here. There's a little bit of further work that we need to do around responsiveness. I'll introduce you to that in the next episode and all the benefits that that brings. And so, of course, please do like the video if you've been enjoying this particular series. It gets these these kind of these walkthrough videos out to the wider Flutterflow community because, you know, everybody is at different sort of learning stages of these no code tools. And um, my videos are very much about kind of more full walk through more slower paced that's kind of really for the rest of us I guess um, when we're trying to learn all of the uh, these tools so please do subscribe to the channel as well if you've been enjoying all this particular content of course even if you've only just sort of uh, been a viewer of my content recently please do have a look at my back catalogue there as well because there's so much more Flutterflow content available and if you are wanting to learn more and you're looking to get a great community support around you as well then please do consider joining the Digital Pros No Code Academy We've got a dedicated community there and um, and all of this video content is there as well, all nicely curated and there's some nice written articles is there as well. And there'll be some exclusive videos and events coming very, very soon to the, uh, to the Academy. So the link is in the description for that. And um, until then, I'll see you in the next episode and thanks for watching. <laughs>